Kristen, how are you this morning? I'm doing all right, thank you. What's been your most rewarding time as a library media specialist? I think every day is rewarding in some way. Um, with, with the way everything is changing and everything is growing and my role grows and my role changes, I just love my job every single day. And it's important for me to be here. I, I just, it, it's so rewarding for me. So I, you know, I guess that's a kind of broad answer, but I can't pick just one aspect of it because it's all so good right now. Do you think with the, uh, with the creation of the Innovation Center that this has, has uh, how has it broadened your role? I think that Andy coming in with his ideas has allowed me to express my own ideas that were in the back of my head but maybe didn't want to come out all the time. So um, having the flexibility and the freedom to kind of play around and do what I want and create a new space and create a new area has kind of made the whole space flourish. Can you give maybe an example of one um, thing that you've done that was in the back of your brain but has now made it to the front? Um, well, you know what, crazy as it is, just even flexible furniture and having flexible everything movable just may, opens up the space to so many more um, experiences that can take place in here. Um, today is a crazy day. We had um, trade show ideas going on three periods of the day. We have a German class coming in and creating a village. We have a um, social studies class coming in and taking over for yet another period. I just, I can't keep teachers out of here. And I think that having a flexible space and an open mind make this place untouchable. And, and I think, you know, one reason obviously they come here is because of, of the resources of the furniture of the the different technology that we have in there, but I mean, I, I think probably the bigger reason is is Kristen, that you know she's she's helped with the planning on so many different lessons. Um, how we've done multiple uh, escape rooms in the last uh, you know last month or so in, in various different subjects. I think we're at least over double digits in four or five different subjects, and knowing that she can co-teach, she can co-plan, um, that it's just it's just much more. I mean, she's really a uh, uh, just another instructional support that we have here. What is an escape room? <laughs> so the big thing to do in spare time for adults, crazy as it is, is to pay money to get locked in a room and have to go through a series of puzzles and, um, you've done these, mm -hmm. go through puzzles to try to solve how to get, how, get out of that room. There's keys, there's all sorts of things hidden in plain sight that you have to use your powers of observation, some content knowledge, so what we've done is we've made it into an educational experience. Um, we have created escape rooms for math classes, for um, uh, science, for accounting, um, for Span exams. Yep, Spanish. So it's just, it's creating a series of tasks, puzzles per se, um, that kids have to go to go through and to um, basically get out of the library. And, and what's great too is a lot of times and they can be set up different ways, but they're working <coughs> collaboratively. Um, typically, in, in you know some form or, or fashion, they're working together to figure these things out. It's great. And then, and then also, if there are adults that want to do this for twenty five dollars, I'll lock you in my closet <laughs> or in my house. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. Um, but no, it's a uh, um, it's, it's it's something where they have a lot of fun and they're excited to do it, and it's different, and they're really engaged and. Uh, it's amazing the uh, the support that, that Kristen's been able to get our give our teachers on that. And then it opens up a communication between me and that teacher, so that maybe next time they're trying to come up with an idea for a, a project or um, a lesson, that they'll think, oh hey, I should go run some ideas past Kristen, or maybe she has some a thought, and usually I have something to say. And then the other part too, what Kristen can do is then she can connect teachers together. You know, well this person was in last week and they worked on this, and it sounds similar to the project you're doing. You know, maybe you could come in here and talk to them or you could see this so she does a lot of a lot of that as well so she's even having more teachers collaborate than just between her and the teacher Andy how has technology transformed the way in which the innovation center is perceived and used well I mean, we do have technology here when it started we're actually we're the first place that had Chromebooks but now we have every student that has a Chromebook so that's changed a little bit 
Um, we do have an editing room that students can, with a green wall, that students can make their own videos. Uh, we have a Chromo board, which is an interactive flat screen that, that teachers can use. Um, so we definitely have the technology here, but once again, um, you know, it's a large part that, that, that Kristen knows how to use all the equipment. You know, she's a, a resource there as well. Describe an aha moment for a student that you feel you contributed to, and either one of you may participate in that. Well, I can tell you, one of the my favorite parts of my job, but one of my least favorite parts of the job, is matching kids up with books. Because there's nothing worse than having a kid come in and say, I need a book for English class. I hate reading. And I hear that sometimes. So it's, it's I, I take it as a challenge. So I'm going to find you something and you're going to like it. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I had a young man last year who came in who needed a book for English and he hated reading. And so I gave him Michael Vay. And he, since in, in the, he read it brought it back, got the second one, read it, brought it back, started harassing me because I didn't have the third one on the shelf yet. Um, and in less than a year, he read five books. So I just feel like that's like, wow, it really does, I make a difference sometimes. And that's an awesome feeling. And, and I think it's great of all the new things that, um, that Kristen has taken on, but I think that's that love of reading, um, you know, obviously the books is something that still is the core of, of, of what we want Kristen to be about, and she does a wonderful job of that. And I've been able to witness several times her interactions with students, and she'll tell them, hey, I think this will be great. Read a couple page, uh, pages of it. If you don't like it, come back. We'll get you another one. And, um, and you know, it, it's just that interaction and taking, you know, her taking time of all the different things that she's doing right now to find him a book, bring it to him, and then say, hey, I'll, I'll switch out if you want me to. So luckily he's not there when they all bring him back. <laughs> well, I noticed as I looked over at your shelves, are those predominantly fiction? Yes. Okay. I, my collection is mostly fiction. That's what's mostly, that's heavily used. Um, nonfiction, we have some books that are used, not a lot. Um, kids are not interested in using books, and they would rather use the internet. So if my budget is limited, I'm going to give them what they want and what I think they need at that time. Um, because we can find stuff online. And I, you know what, I use my resources too. If we need books and we don't have them here, then I reach out to my local library, the community library here in town. Wonderful resources. You know what, I've gotta be a good customer if I'm gonna sell it to my kids. So, it's important. So, uh, if the students have a research project, uh, what types of resources do they use? You know what, the first place I send them, Info Ohio, I teach that to the English classes as often as possible. Um, it's, it's, it, sometimes it's a struggle getting them to understand, just understand obviously the difference between databases and Google. And then the, I try to explain to them, you know, they've done all the hard work. They've picked out the junk. You don't have to worry about it. So it's just make, coming up with a new song and dance every year to get them to understand it's really easy to do, it's just use Info Ohio. And so they do it. Um, we'll also work with Google Scholar and some other sources, but we do not um, subscribe to any other. I find that what we have through Info Ohio is enough. We don't subscribe to other databases. And I feel like to students, once they know that, then they're, they feel more empowered once they get to college. Have you had any students come back and tell you that, oh, I'm so thankful that you taught me how to use databases from Info Ohio? Always, always. And you know what, it's so funny when I get an email. My, I had to do a research page and I knew what to do. I knew where to go. I actually had a student who emailed me to say that they were still using Info Ohio Cell because the password and username didn't change. So they were using the resources that they had at their, um, at their fingertips. So that kind of makes me giggle. How about you as a principal? Do you have access? You use EBSCO and mm -hmm. the databases for your research and things like that. So as a professional, I think it's a really good resource. And absolutely. And so many times, too, that we talk about, you know, what we use um, <clears throat> with our staff. I mean, we talk about research-based, you know, teaching strategies. We're having conversations right now with a teacher leadership group, how we're looking to possibly, you know, assess students differently or um, how we're looking to, uh, to utilize exams. And, and a lot of times our teachers will say back, well, you know, do we have any, you know, uh, is there any data on this, any research, any other different schools that are doing it? Is there any studies? And, and absolutely we can, 
we can use those resources to get that information to them. So can, uh, now you sort of, you talked about the escape rooms. Can you provide an example of a great collaboration that you've had with a classroom teacher? And what kinds of lessons did you learn from it? Um, well, the escape room is definitely the biggest. I also worked with a teacher recently um, who was working in, uh, it's an English teacher, and she just read Hamlet with her 10th graders. So one of her passions right now is the Broadway show Hamilton. So she brought Hamilton to Big Walnut and she created Hamilton. And as we've moved to more and more projects, and once again a lot of them occur here, is that we have seen you know, how important those, you know, not only the, the video editing part of it, but also just those communication skills. Um, and then, you know, trying to think of all the, and then when you incorporate the technology, those 21st learning, or century learning skills that are going to help them, you know, after high school, after college. Um, we're hearing a lot from, you know, what uh, um, businesses and companies are looking for, you know, students that can work collaboratively, students that can communicate, um, that flexibility. So I think all those things will, will help prepare them better. Our first escape room was a midterm exam for a Spanish class. She came in. The teacher came in one day and Jason and I were sitting at the desk and she, she was just saying, I want to do something different. I don't want to give them a test that they take for two hours and it's boring. And so I don't, I'm not even, you know, we were just beating around talking about this, um, this escape room article that we had been reading and we said, well, why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't we try it? And it went downhill from there and it was, it was great fun. But no, we couldn't be we couldn't be more happy with, with, with what she's done for our staff and students and then what the space has become. How long have you been at um, Big Walnut? This is my tenth year. Mm -hmm. I was here. I was brought in to do a major renovation, or when I was hired, they were getting ready to start a major renovation. Um, it hadn't been renovated since ninety one when the building was built. And we had shelves that felt like they were up to the ceiling. You couldn't see any of the windows across the back. And it was kind of gray and maroon and just a dark place um, hadn't been weeded I don't think ever and so it was hard losing books and the collection here has dwindled significantly and of course that's painful but it is for the best and I know that and so it's it's just I have my moments of solid silence where I just say goodbye and then I move forward because that's all we can do it's it's hard for librarians sometimes to give Absolutely. that up, isn't it? Absolutely. That book culture, the particularly the nonfiction. Uh, yeah, I wear heavy on memoirs because they still they still use those, um, and really not a whole lot else. Cookbooks, but that's because of me. I bring in the stuff that I don't want at home, or else I bring them in here and I store them here. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for being part of our first uh, on air. And um, we'll look forward to talking to you more on Tuesday. Right. Thank, thank you. you.